welcome everyone. I hope you are doing well. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is uh, Marian and I'm an international marketing specialist at the University of Tartu. I am uh, very happy to welcome you to the Alumni Talks 2023 event and I will be your host today. So Alumni Talks is our new series where our fantastic alumni share their story of studying at the University of Tartu and uh, they will give a short lecture on a topic they chose. So uh, today I am here with uh, Bing. Uh, she is a student from China who is currently working on her second master's degree at the University of Tartu. She uh, graduated from the Contemporary Asian and Middle Eastern Studies in 2022, and uh, she is currently working at an Estonian supply chain company. And uh, today, uh, Bing will uh, speak about uh, learning about China from uh, Chinese social media. So uh, before we start, just a little housekeeping. If you have any questions during the webinar, please leave them to the Q&A box and uh, we will address them at the end of the webinar. If you have any technical difficulties, please write us in the chat box and we will try to help you resolve them. And uh, also we are recording today's talk and all participants will uh, receive a recording after the webinar. But uh, now, without further ado, I would like to give a floor to our presenter today. So uh, Bing, if you are ready, you can start. Okay, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you for the introduction. And uh, good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining today. And uh, it is my honor to be invited to this uh, uh, event. And uh, before, like, uh, you know, there is also like my background uh, introduction. Let me wait a second. I'm sorry. Uh, let me put my slides on. Can you see my slide? Yes. Okay. Um. Okay, so uh, Mary already uh, introduced uh, my background already, and I'll go a little bit, go through with it as well. And so like I joined the University of Tartu in uh, 2019, and I have been living in Estonia for three and a, five, three and a half years. And uh, from the contemporary Asian and Middle East, uh, studies and right now I'm currently uh, studying in the innovation technology management but also like meanwhile I'm working uh, in the global sourcing uh, team in the in a JP way which is a uh, Estonia uh, supply chain companies and uh, I did a lot during a study in universities because like I think uh, University of Tartu is a very uh, has a really good opportunity for a uh, student to, to uh, discover themselves. So I'm also a member of uh, international student uh, ambassador, uh, the organization. And um, so like today, my topic is uh, talking about like uh, learning in China from the Chinese social media. And uh, I'm glad like, uh, because I'm also like, uh, uh, I had a sad, sad project which is helping the University of Tartu to, to manage the social, their social media in the Chinese uh, social media website, uh, like uh, the platform. And so I think uh, maybe I have something can offer to you today. Okay. So my first topic is like a why. I want to go through like a, there's uh, some three major things like why we want to talk why I want to talk about this topic and uh, what I will talk about this and how uh, people can learn from this topic so and uh, this is a my thesis topic as well 
And uh, so the Chinese uh, social media, like uh, maybe a lot of people, sorry, like uh, maybe a lot of people thinking like, uh, oh, why China doesn't uh, uh, using Facebook uh, and uh, or like uh, Instagram, something like that. And, uh, but uh, the thing is like uh, uh, during my research, I find like actually uh, the Chinese social media are more focused uh, of course of more focused uh, for Chinese. And uh, there's not so many um, Chinese people actually speak English very well. So like uh, in the way uh, we all know there is a boundary like uh, for the Chinese government, uh, like uh, try to ban it those uh, Western social media for Chinese people, but uh, uh, for Chinese people themselves, they have a very large uh, social media net and uh, people using there, which can actually be enough for them to using for their daily needs. So um, that's why like, I think uh, like if, uh, when we talk thinking about when we talk about China nowadays, like you always like saying like uh, a lot of news about political things, but uh, actually not many people actually focus on the Chinese uh, citizens, like how Chinese people are, Chinese culture are, and uh, you can actually say how really China is from their actually citizens from the Chinese social media, and. Um, from uh, 2020, because uh, uh, I did some searching online, um, they only have the data from 2020. And um, so like the Chinese uh, uh, social media account from Chinese uh, mainstream media is like uh, 6,000 to 8,000. So which means there's a lot of channel, like you can, like the, the account channel, you can uh, find the, like the Chinese social media. But like there's a couple major Chinese uh, uh, social media using is uh, uh, okay. Uh, so the main Chinese social media is using the is in a couple different uh, uh, main major platform, which I'll introduce later. And uh, so like uh, as I mentioned, like uh, why we need to learn about the China from the Chinese social media. And my thought is uh, the news like uh, is not always uh, the reliable one because uh, no matter like the news in China, outside of China, and sometimes like uh, when we see news, normally it's bring negative, um, mo most of the time it's bring the negative information to people, which uh, people will consider the country maybe just like that. And uh, there's a lot of, uh, from what I say, like uh, living over, uh, actually I've been also living outside of China for six years now. So the news from what I say and the information from what I say about uh, China, and uh, I have to say like, there's a lot of bias and the stereotype in there. And uh, maybe like a lot of people didn't even realize how big China is. And uh, there's a lot of the culture difference and uh, different peoples and uh, people doing their business in different ways and uh, the political um, topic and uh, authority is also different in different cities. And uh, for me, I think uh, um, if someone are really interested into the topic uh, related to China, um, I would ha highly recommend it them, like not just the same China from the Western media or just because someone maybe just went to China for 10 days or some traveling and then they will see themselves knowing China very well. I think that's uh, maybe not true. So I think if someone really wants to know about what this uh, country really are, what is their social value are, and the best way is uh, to say through their social media because uh, um, Chinese social media as the uh, same as uh, all the Western social media as well. And uh, it uh, can reflect what actually people there care about uh, talking about and uh, what the people's life actually are. And um, there's a couple benefits for learning uh, China from Chinese social media. And first, uh, I think uh, for academic studies, 
And myself, I write a thesis about uh, the uh, Chinese, the difference uh, uh, about uh, uh, Chinese social media compared with the Chinese state media's uh, attitude towards Europe. Um, I personally think like uh, if, uh, because the country and the country, they are meant to be collaborating in so if Chinese want to learn about uh, what a Western country are, and they should also look into what is the people are instead of just looking into the political side. And the same thing. And if uh, the European or Western world would like to say like how is China actually doing or try about uh, like uh, how to co collaborate or working with the uh, Chinese people. I think the best way is uh, uh, looking through their uh, citizens' opinion instead of just uh, some political news and uh, some political uh, statement. And so like uh, my thesis was talking about uh, the comparison and uh, the difference of the Chinese social media and the government media, just to say like how do they have a similar uh, attitude towards to the Europe? And it's just my, but uh, there's a lot of other uh, topics can be analyzed through this uh, uh, Chinese social media data. When we when I talk about data, is uh, also it could be means a lot of data. Uh, it could be the content data, it could be the topic, uh, uh, the frequency data, and um, it could be like a, a, a lot of like different analyzing way to uh, using those data to uh, bring like more information for people to understand each other. I think uh, like uh, uh, for for the like for the government side or for citizen side and uh, to understand each other is uh, very important. So we can avoid the conflicts and we can avoid some uh, unpleasant experience. And uh, meanwhile, for the business, I think uh, like uh, if people who would like to do the business uh, in the Chinese uh, uh, market, I think uh, like to understand what is the Chinese consumers prefer and uh, going through the Chinese social medias, the trending of Chinese social medias, which is, uh, uh, I would say maybe the easy way to uh, analyzing the data of what people like. Like nowadays, uh, uh, data science is very popular. So the, you can use a different way to analyze the people's uh, preference and uh, from the business side, if uh, people actually um, try to sell in their product to China and uh, to analyzing the content of people's preference through the Chinese social media, it's more uh, easy and quick. Uh, maybe not that easy though, but it's more efficiency, I would say. And uh, meanwhile, like I think uh, like uh, the platform I will talk about today, it. Uh, uh, will bring some more innovation ideas about uh, uh, what uh, its uh, life could be, I think. Because like I would say like uh, there's uh, two platform I would introduce, introduce today. And one of them, no, like I said, it's a couple of them, but one of them is uh, called WeChat. Uh, WeChat is one of the biggest Chinese social media, which you can consider as the uh, WhatsApp. And, uh, but, uh, the using of WeChat is much uh, is much more complicated, uh, uh, or not not complicated. It's more, uh, I would say, we call it a super app, which means it uh, can it's an implement with a lot of uh, functions in this app. I'll introduce it later. And uh, however, uh, there's a, a very disadvantage or I'll say negative part of learn, like a, to, when we're talking about English here, so um, to, we're saying like learning China from Chinese social media, but uh, the language barrier is very pain. Uh, for ch in China, not a, a lot of people actually speak uh, English. And the people, I mean, even though nowadays, like everyone knows English is very important and uh, the kids started uh, starting to learn English at really early, 
very early age, but um, the foreigner uh, like in China is uh, mainly like a tourist and uh, not so many people actually living in China. And it's very difficult to have this uh, real conversation opportunity for a regular person. I'm from uh, the city, uh, tourist, uh, foreign tourist there. So when I was kids, I practiced my English uh, on the street because uh, I just grabbed some pe people like look like foreigner and then say, can I practice my English with you? But uh, uh, not like everyone want to do that. And not everyone would like to, um, uh, to talk to foreigner either because a lot of Chinese people are pretty shy. So in a way, like, uh, so the Chinese social media, their content mostly would be like uh, in English, uh, in, in Chinese, not in English. So like if some people uh, outside of China and do not speak Chinese, it would be very difficult for them to understand. And, um, but, uh, um, to learning about China, like uh, I think in the way you have to learn about in, uh, in learning the Chinese, because uh, uh, translated from Chinese to English is actually lost uh, the true meaning of it. I think Chinese language is very uh, complicated and difficult actually. So it's uh, it's hard to explain it every, very well through the, uh, the other language. So if uh, someone are really into interested into like uh, um, the whole concept about related to China, I think uh, uh, the English the Chinese uh, skill is. So, um, and then I'm coming to talk to, to you, like what do we need to know about the Chinese social media? As I mentioned, there's a lot of different platform of the Chinese social media. And there are some very popular um, platform I, I listed here is the one is a WeChat, which is a combined WhatsApp and Instagram, I would say. And another one is Weibo, you can consider is a Chinese Twitter. And one of the, another one is like called Xiaohongshu, is an interest and the Instagram and the Yep. And also in the way is Google, because uh, I'll explain to you when I uh, show in the page later. And another one is Bilibili, which is uh, refers to YouTube and Douyin is the TikTok. And if you don't know, uh, TikTok is actually a Chinese, uh, uh, it's the same company with Douyin because, uh, but uh, like it was got so successed in China. So they decided to go overseas. And uh, I'll use some examples from, uh, from this account I'm managing. And this is the University of Tartu one. And the, you can see like people can um, people can go through like a, as a chat, and it also has uh, the some service, and uh, you can have a WeChat friend. Uh, uh, this is a WeChat uh, memory, so people can actually uh, share their uh, information like uh, like Instagram, like their daily life, and uh, it's really uh, it's used very frequently. I use this uh, app very frequently, almost every day to contact with uh, my families. And uh, on this app, we can also have this uh, official account, like a company official account and uh, some uh, self media uh, official account. If, if you do not know what I mean by self media, like in China, we call it self media, but it's actually, uh, it's a citizen journalist, which means like a regular people who uh, are not under any authority who can uh, post their stories and uh, their life or uh, just like an influencer in a way and uh, to create the account in this uh, uh, social media. And this is the Weibo. And um, you can see like it's much more content in here in 
So I was like Weibo, you can add everyone as your follower, and WeChat is a uh, has some privacy. You can only add the people you know. And for our university one, uh, when I'm managing this, and we have uh, more than a thousand followers, and um, in this like you can, so like all this app the interesting part like you can also use them to pay things so um but also like uh, for news if you are interested in, in chinese news you can also use weibo and then you can see uh in this i'm sorry it is in chinese <laughs> maybe look so confusing for you but uh, like uh, this uh the last uh, page if you can see my mouse and uh, it's called uh, the hot searching and for the health searching, like you can see, like what is the people are care about, and the, the, what is the most revealed news. And every day it will be different. And uh, and then when you analyze this uh, information, in people can actually know like uh, uh, what the people's uh, focus, on what the problem going on in China, and. Uh, as I mentioned, like it's uh, it's really sad, like if you cannot uh, read it. But uh, all this website has their English version, but uh, the things like the content will be in Chinese. And uh, this is uh, like a this is one of my favorite new uh, platform, Xiaohongshu, which it has uh, uh, all functions. You can communicate with people. You can also um, post as uh, Instagram and uh, for University of Toronto one, like I post uh, some of this uh, um, uh, application information. But uh, when I searching uh, Tartu and I got like a lot of other people's post, so I can see uh, the the students in here actually posting their life experience to share their life experience to this. Uh, in about uh, Estonia or and about their life in University of Tartu. So in the way, and it's a very good uh, method for the people who actually want to uh, advertise them on this Chinese platform, because um, if uh, people use their product, they will share on this platform. And this platform also is uh, very popular for people are in overseas, I would say, because it's original. Uh, it was a platform to share your uh, experience abroad. And then when it's growing bigger and bigger, and uh, um, it's more like uh, people also sharing their life experience. And uh, I think because we decided to open this account because I found out a lot of universities actually uh, open their accounts here as well. And uh, because uh, people are more real on this uh, platform, well, when I say real, it's like a to be real on their opinion because uh, um, you can see a lot of people actually share their uh, experience and the pictures uh, related to some certain topic. So when I search in the part two, and uh, uh, I didn't post the, like the picture in here, but when I search in Estonia, there will be like uh, maybe 10,000 searching a uh, hashtag in there already. So um, this is also one of the way to helping uh, the companies uh, to expanding their brand and or do their, their marketing. And uh, another platform I would like to introduce to people is the Bilibili. Bilibili is uh, like uh, the Chinese YouTube channel, and uh, it has a lot of uh, um, it's it's almost the same as YouTube, I would say, and the people also can share their experience here. And uh, the most popular topic in here, like uh, it's uh, like uh, you can. This is my account when I opened it, so. I have uh, seen some students already shared their like uh, experience of study in Estonia, and maybe sometimes it's just a little uh, clip about uh, uh, how their life are and uh, what uh, it's uh, this university looks like, and uh, what uh, people it's a, 
of course, this is also re requires the people who are willing to do it. And uh, you can also see like uh, what is the most popular uh, like uh, videos uh, of people watching. And in the way this is uh, can be used uh, as a content analysis uh, for either in the business way or academic way. So as I mentioned so many times about uh, like this data we can use it. And so how could we learn from chi about China from those Chinese social media? And uh, how should we use this social media as an individual or business or organization? And as I showed you like a uh, um, couple like platform, I was uh, man managing for the university. And uh, this is uh, like, uh, also can be used for individual and uh, for business. It really depends on what you're using for. And uh, for the data and like all this content, of, we can collect it as a data and um, analysis. And for, like uh, this uh, graph I posted here is um, uh, from my thesis. And then we can see like, uh, because it was uh, last year. And so we can see like the topic of COVID is like 27%. And there's a topic on business is like 7%. And uh, for traveling is 16%. Well, this is regarding to the topic about uh, Europe of course uh, like uh, and then uh, also like there's a lot of topic related related to trading and the politicals and uh, as i've said like those all these data are very useful for uh, academic like uh, if you want to write a thesis i think uh, uh, analyzing the chinese uh, social media is a very uh, practical way and because uh, it's different uh, with Chinese government, like the state-owned media, because uh, the state-owned media, uh, in the way, it, it might have some bias. And um, so for social media, for the Chinese the social media, like the social media might be a little bit different, but in like uh, people also need to understand the Chinese sarcasm as well, because, uh, it's it's on saying like a, there is a, some restrictions on the Chinese uh, social media what you can post and what you can not post. But uh, people always find their way, and people use different method to uh, sarcasm their problems or the government's problems. And uh, so like uh, this is how they can express their feelings about uh, the problems. And for marketing, uh, using like uh, those data can be analyzing about the trendy, uh, like uh, the target, uh, the marketing target audience, business using, and uh, it's a very uh, important branding. So for branding using like using the Chinese social media platform is very, um practical in a way so if i go back to this uh, uh xiao hong chu and uh, i only oh, i opened this account uh, like last uh, december and uh, just about a month or like i can show you this is the number here like i already have 121 uh followers already and i'll say like uh, it's really quick growing about your subscribe, like the people's subscribers. So that's why I think like uh, uh, if uh, some company want to branding or uh, do some marketing uh, method, I think uh, using those uh, uh, platform is very useful. But uh, in a way, like for content analysis, this is the data I'm talking about again. And uh, I would like to uh, remind people and they need to be very cautious a lot of things like, uh, uh, for example, for, for TikTok, like uh, the same way of the Chinese doing as, and uh, a lot of content in here, you, what you see might not what you see. So why I saying that? Because a lot of information like I, for Chinese, it might be easy to say, this is maybe, it's definitely fake. 
because uh, we all know like uh, uh, the the click, the video click for uh, some videos, the people can actually make money of it. And nowadays, uh, I I don't like to see this, but like people actually uh, making some fake video to pretending the actually uh, stories and to confusing people just because they want more click in there so they can make more money. And so I would like if someone using this uh, like a Chinese social media data and uh, like the continent data as their academic studies. So you really need to learn what is a fake news, what is uh, real, because some of the video is just uh, untrue. And it's, uh, uh, I didn't, because it's really difficult for me to bring an example here. Um, I can, like I cannot uh, uh, share the link in there because uh, like it's an app link. And for example, I watching uh, some video a long time ago and um, like uh, how people cooking in the China, in China. And they just make a very messy and throw the food in there and uh, put in a lot of uh, like the surroundings like a uh, nasty, but uh, Maybe some people, if they've never been to China, they might think this is just China are, but that's not true. I would say like, so I wish like people who are using the Chinese uh, data, like social media data, they are actually can be like recognize what is a fake, what is a real. And so this is like an example of my thesis back then. And uh, when we, when I did the searching, like I searching like the topic of China, and then I it's come out like uh, uh, all different uh, articles, and the, in in these articles you could see that like, the sources a constant name and how many people check these uh, stories, and uh, the Chinese uh, social like uh, you can also say like if you can go inside of the account to say if this uh, media uh, is a company or individual or the Chinese. Uh, uh, state on the media. And uh, so like uh, those data can be used as uh, analyzing uh, about uh, the topic you want to discover in the Chinese uh, side. And uh, so like uh, you can see like how many people actually interested into these articles and uh, there have a comments in there. You can also see what is people's comments are negative or positive, and then you can learn what is people actually thinking. And of course, like those type of uh, studies is a very complicated and uh, time consuming. So if someone really wants to discover and, and like study in this, you really need to take a lot of effort. And uh, this is uh, uh, also from my thesis, like a, I did like a sentimental analysis result about uh, uh, EU and Europe in the Chinese media. Like you can see like one, one side is uh, uh, the left side is the self media, which is also refers to the social media side. And another side is the state owned media, which is refers to the like uh, the Chinese government owned uh, the media. And uh, well, this data is uh, com like uh, I did uh, about 200 articles uh, like uh, analyzing and uh, those data is was uh, two years ago. So maybe now it's, <laughs> it's not uh, uh, because the COVID situation is changing, there's a different uh, variables. And uh, so maybe those data is not valid anymore. So if someone also are interested in this uh, and uh, you can take a look of my thesis and then maybe you can write your own as well. And uh, yeah, this is uh, will be end of my uh, presentation. And uh, I know like it, it was a pretty short time and uh, there's actually more I want to talk about, about, about uh, how to learn China from the Chinese social media from different platform. And, but uh, like uh, I think uh, today we can, maybe like if you're interested into these topics and you can also contact me and, I'm also like a student ambassador. So my email is there. You can write to me an email. And 
I think uh, that will be it for my presentation. I hope uh, I hope I bring something interesting for you because like this is a late day and you could choose to uh, to watch a movie at home or to relax and then you come to listen to this. So for anyone here to listen to this presentation, I also want to say thank you. Thank, thank you again to uh, listen to this presentation. And I think maybe we can go for the Q&A section. Okay, thank you so much, Ping, for this exciting talk. And uh, as you said, now it is time for some questions from our audience. And uh, just a reminder, please type your questions to the Q&A box. So I will just uh, start off with the first question. So um, it says that, could you please describe the program structure and are there any specializations? Uh, I hope it means like the structure of the contemporary Asian Middle East, right? You think? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so like uh, the, there is some uh, mandatory classes like you have to study. And I think, uh, uh, and then I don't remember clearly, I think it was the six classes of them or maybe a little bit more, which you actually can finish is, uh, if you work really hard, you can finish it for one semester and then you can choose the direction you want to focus on. And um, so like, I think for this, uh, uh, direction I choose that I, I, pr I prefer to learn more related to China side or Asian side because like we are like a contemporary Asian and the Middle East because like for me like maybe a lot of people ask me like oh you're Chinese yourself already why there's a one of the interesting things I want to learn because like a, I don't want to want myself to be a stereotype so I would like to learn what is the Western university and the Western world teachers to teaching about uh, this type of topic. So, um, and then after you finish all your classes, you need to do some like internship. And then I highly, if anyone who joined this program, I highly recommended you to go exchange into Asian country. And then you could, uh, because like University of Tartu has a lot of university, uh, like a co cooperative universities. So go to exchange, it can make you help you to learn more about uh, uh, these uh, topics. Okay, thank you. So uh, the next question is that, what are the most popular social and state media in China? And uh, what social and state media did you analyze for your study? So uh, I think the most popular one is the Xinhua Net, and uh, also like a, uh, let me take a look. I have a list. So yeah, uh, the I think the most popular is the Xinhua Net and the People People Net, and uh, uh, also CCTV. Like uh, you know, like this is like a, this is there are TV. The TV company as well, but they also has the platform as the, like a, on the social media. Like a, you know, like nowadays, like a, I feel like the traditional media has to go on the social media to take some market share, share, so they can have some space in there. And uh, uh, so I did uh, research. So I did research based on the WeChat actually. So on WeChat, some of these state media also has their own account, and then they will post the um, they will post their uh, information there, and uh, I collect those articles and analyze the, it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And uh, before the next question, I forgot to say, if you could please uh, stop sharing your screen now, would be great. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Yes, okay. thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now it's fine. 
Sorry. So uh, the next question is that, uh, do I need to speak any Asian language for studying this program? And if not, do I need to learn one during the studies? So uh, you do not need to uh, speak any Asian language in this program, but so, like you do have to study some. And uh, uh, because like uh, there's a 12 credit in this program, so you have do you have it's a mandatory one so you have to study language for 12 credit credit which is two semester so okay. and, uh, yeah like there's a, so in the university we have asian language we have korean japanese and uh, chinese and uh, i think that's that's all so there's some other, like turkish so, something like that if you're interested you can learn yeah okay thank you so uh, the next one is that is wechat controlled by the government nope wechat is a private company and owned by the private uh, sector person i think it, uh, well there's a ceo in there but uh, um it's not controlled by the government so well in the way i if you say controlled i you know, like a, maybe it, it's really hard to see, like a control of what is too strong. So I would say no. Okay. Um, so uh, the next question is how difficult is it to find a job after graduation? So, uh, so far, like uh, the people I know all find a job. But uh, in the way I would like to say it's very uh, tricky. Because like, uh, I think uh, in, if you study a culture or political, because this program is more like a culture and uh, political related. And uh, since we're living in Estonia, it's, uh, I'm not sure like uh, who asked this uh, question, but uh, if you are not from European and uh, to find uh, those uh, topic related job, it was a little bit uh, um, difficult, I'll say. Yeah, in a way, but uh, like, uh, for example, uh, my company like a uh, is a supply chain company and we are we have uh, some connections in china so which uh, i think for me it wasn't that difficult to find this job so i think it really depends on what you want to do and uh, what you're planning to work with so yeah okay so i actually have a follow-up question to that it's just my interest. Um, what positions do the people have that you know that found a job after graduation? Uh, so I know one of my friend is uh, working for some like a government job in Estonia, but he's Estonian, and oh. uh, yeah, and one of them are working in the marketing, and one of them working in bank. <laughs> Which like yeah, it's actually all, all over the place. And one of them, I think, working in a customer service. Yeah. So a good variety. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's actually a really good variety. That's the thing about this program. You actually, unless you want to go for a PhD, otherwise you can go to all different fields if as you want. Okay, thank you. So uh, the next question is, how is your life different in in Estonia? And uh, what is your favorite Estonian food? Uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah, Estonia is pretty different from what I'm from because like uh, the, the whole Estonia has 1.3 million people, if I remember. Right. Yeah. And uh, the, the city I was living, so ju just one city. So I think uh, like, uh, for the size wise, like uh, I do feel a lot of space here. It's uh, really quiet. And uh, in the way I like it <laughs> because like uh, I don't need to take a uh, two hours of the bus to go somewhere else. Yeah. I can just walk. Yeah. And, um, and I think uh, like the weather maybe a little bit different. It's much colder than where I'm from, but uh, I mean, I also, I'm from north of China, so we're pretty cold there too. So it's not that a big difference. I mean, it's much snow here, which is nice. I think like uh, because global warming back home is not snow that much anymore. 
Yeah. <laughs> Do you also have a favorite Estonian food? Smoked salmon. Smoked salmon? Yeah. So I think uh, like uh, Estonia has a lot of smoked food. Yeah. And uh, which is a uh, very similar to where I was studying for my bachelor. Sichuan province. They have a lot of uh, smoked food as well, like a smoke, smoked smoked uh, uh, pork belly. Okay. Yeah, and then I like you know, I feel like it's kind of like a easy access for me to like cooking similar food as uh, what I eat back home. We have like a common sense of culture, I guess, food culture. Okay. So. Um... There is a question, why was the University of Tartu your preferred university for the course? Uh, so I actually, when I applied, I did apply some different universities. And, uh, but uh, I don't like to feel like an ego about it, but uh, when you're searching, you know, University of Tartu is a better university. <laughs> so of course, like you'll come here, right? Like, a, I, I don't want to diss any other university in Estonia, but like we, we are pretty good uh, high up there. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's like when I got the offer, I said, oh, compared with the university, like, uh, oh, okay, Tartu seems like a better place to go. And so that's how I decided. But uh, uh, also like uh, the curriculum is was a little bit different. The other program I was applying is more like uh, the international stuff, uh, like a, uh, Internet, international efforts or international relations, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So like, uh, I think uh, this one might be a little bit, uh, because like when I saw this uh, advertising for this uh, program, people also said like, uh, if you're interested into business, you can also learn from here as well. Because like uh, this program, there's one, this, this is the thing, I really like this program because it's very flexible in a way. Because, uh, for example, like I'm studying again in ITM now, like there's so many mandatory classes you have to take, but for this program, you have less mandatory classes and you can go the direction, whatever direction you want in the university. So I think that's a benefit of it. Okay, thank you. So um, next I will ask, how easy is it to pursue a topic of interest if the person already has a thought for a topic for his master's thesis? Well, if they have a thought of their master's thesis, I think it's very easy because you just need to find the, um, the professor or lecturers who are actually in the field mm -hmm. and then you just go to talk to them, most likely, if they're not that busy, you've been taking. So, yeah. But uh, one advice is uh, prepare earlier. <laughs> That's good advice, always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, could you tell something about student life in Tartu? Oh, I have to say, like, student life in Tartu is very colorful, I'll say. There's even though like a Tartu is so small and but I really like it because uh, like uh, when I was traveling to I went to Sweden like a lot, couple months ago I want to find something to do and I search it on Facebook I cannot find anything because like but like for you know, for for Tartu as long as you you check it event and then you say like a uh, just put location in Tartu there's like a events happen today especially on weekend so i think like uh, it's a uh, you can go to you can go to bar you can go to like yes an event and uh, also like you can join all kinds of like a uh, student uh, uh, organization for my, myself i'm in isa so um i've been in isa for a very long time actually and uh, i'm really glad because like uh, we do a lot of cool things together and uh, and also like we are consulting for like, a, we are consulting for the upcoming students as well. And this is like a work part, but we also have fun things to do. We have like different like a, 
uh, team events and then people getting together. We have different uh, like uh, activities. It's pretty fun. So yeah, I'll say like student life are very interesting. Yeah. I totally agree. There's always something going on. Yeah, it's always, I feel like I'm even harder to follow up. It's like, yeah. oh, I want to go to this one and I want to go to that one. They all happen at the same time. <laughs> Um, so, um, the next question is that what do you think about the University of Tartu's Chinese social media from your professional point of view? Uh, well, for me, because I'm the one managing it, <laughs> so you basically ask me how do you think I, ma I managed it, I wish I could do better because uh, uh, there's a lot of content I could put in there, but uh, um, also, like uh, it's uh, so sometimes like the videos, like I would like to put more videos, but it's uh, for me it's sometimes it's also difficult to put the translator on there. It takes a lot of time, and I still have a school, to, so yeah. And uh, but uh, in general, I think uh, it could be improved. Uh, yeah, from my view <laughs> of my work. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, nevertheless, I'm glad that uh, you are uh, doing the Chinese social media for us. So thank you. <laughs> no problem. And uh, so the next question is, are you planning on developing your study about the Chinese social media in the future? If yes, what would be the next direction? Uh, well, currently I'm helping with the account managing. And uh, I I don't know like if uh, if we have a, like uh, I think uh, that's for now I don't have a really a uh, further plan for this because uh, uh, I think it's a lot to learn for example like a uh, photo editing video editing and uh, how to be better at wording when you're posting a post so like right now I'm more focus on like how to do better what am i doing yeah okay thank you so um did you study any other foreign languages during your studies uh yeah i studied some japanese so um and estonia but my estonia is really bad so <laughs> i i do i want to pick it up again maybe later when I'm after graduate because like you know when you're at the school and the studying language is uh, you need to put much much more effort yeah yeah it's not like you go to classes uh, twice a week and then after that you will be a good speaker because like uh, when I when I was studying the Estonia like a uh, I feel like I, when I was trying to speak to people, to people and then people just get so tired of waiting for me to finish that sentence because I cannot remember the word. <laughs> and then they just trans to change back to Estonia. But uh, um, I do recommend that people to study some Estonia, even though just for the basic, uh, like for me right now, since I didn't practice for so long, I only can say a couple of words. But if I go to this like a local grandma shop, and if I just say cux kilo, which means two kilo, because I don't go three, you know, like I don't need anything for three kilo, but they're so happy. They say, oh, I should speak the Estonia. Yeah. And uh, Japanese is just like, I I want to pick it up with something like different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, it's also was pretty interesting. But uh, as I said, like uh, back then, I thought like study language would be so easy in the Universal Charter. And and I find out, no, just you really have to put, put effort in there. So don't slack in, do your homework on time. <laughs> Remember your vocabulary. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think we will have time for one last question. Uh, so what are the things that you didn't expect about the University of Tartu? Hmm. I didn't expect. I think, okay, like I guess um, before I came, I didn't, I 
like this one of the reason I want to study abroad because I'm looking for some different uh, experience and uh, there's one thing I didn't expect is it's actually no campus you know like the campus is the city in general mm -hmm. and because like in China normally a university is, has a campus they have their own gate and then you go into the gate and it will be the campus it's kind of like a high school but like a much much larger version you have your own like a shopping area or canteen area and but for Tartu it's more like the city the university building is actually blended into the city and uh, that's something like I didn't expect uh, how spread it is but I mean Tartu is really small but in general like from my perspective when I was studying back in China it's like everything is packed together mm -hmm. you know in the gate <laughs> so yeah that's a little bit different and uh, another thing is like I didn't uh, uh, expect is like uh, how the university encourage the people like the students of their innovation way because like like this program is also under the uh, business and academic and, and the economy and uh, so we can we can have a, a lot of opportunity to actually to go in a lot of like a startup event startup training and uh, all this uh, like uh, to make your own thoughts to become to real i guess because like uh, also from my perspective before i i studied english for my bachelor's so we're all more focused on the english side not for to become to a business person <laughs> or like a, you know, like a, a company building. I guess also that's the, the spiritual of Estonia as well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So that's something I didn't expect, and I really enjoy it. I was a volunteer for Startup Day, and uh, it was really fun. Okay. Thank you. So I believe we have covered all the questions from our audience. I would like to thank our presenter Bing for sharing her experience and uh, for a great talk on an interesting topic. And uh, thanks to our audience for being with us today. And uh, also a few things before we wrap up today, if you are a future student and uh, planning to apply to this program this year, the application period has already started and the deadline is on 15 March. And uh, also there is going to be a virtual meeting with the program director where you can ask any questions you have regarding the program. And uh, we will send you the information along with the recording of today's talk. So uh, thank you again to everybody for joining us today. Then especially thank you to Bing and uh, I wish you all a nice evening. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye.